us that you might come forward. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk on a thought today entitled, A Mandate by God. A Mandate by God. My brothers and my sisters, in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior, before our Master Jesus ascended back to heaven, Jesus, he issued what we call in this text today, the Great Commission. Amen. Christian friends of the cross of Jesus Christ, a commission is an authoritative command, a directive by the master for the church. Did y'all hear me? Yes. Amen. A commission Amen. is an authoritative command. All right. It's spoken. Amen. Loudly. Uh -huh. forcefully. It is a directive. We don't have a choice in the matter by the master for the church. When Jesus, he spoke these words directly to his disciples and he's speaking today indirectly to us. Amen. Jesus was given the church her marching orders. All right. All right. Jesus, he tells the church exactly what they are to do in his physical absence. You remember the story where he had informed them that he was going away to prepare a place. The Bible makes it <laughs> clearly known that where he at, there they may be also. Yes. And he's speaking about his physical absence. The disciples, they took the Lord's directive very seriously. Yes. They shared Jesus' gospel and in Acts, he lets us know that thousands came to the Lord and were saved by God's amazing grace. Amen. Acts 17 and 6 says, and when they found them not, speaking about it was an incident here, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. It was a profound effect in their preaching. Amen. The New Living Translation Bible, it says it makes it a little bit more clear to us today. It says, not finding them there, they dragged out Jason and some of the other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world. Right. They shouted. And now they are here disturbing our city too. Uh -huh. Makes it a little bit more clear for us today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. That we had some preachers here that was preaching, radical preaching, causing conflict back then, so they said. The church of the living God, all to take on this nature, this characteristic, we ought to have spiritual disruptive behavior towards the world of sin. Mm -hmm. The world ought to view the church as turning the world upside down. Mm -hmm. come on, come on. We should not just exist to be That's in a location without doing something productive for the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. The church ought to love the sinner. And hate the sin. That's right. That's right. Don't get it twisted. Love the self. But just hate the sin. Just like we hear it, sin, it, it, it can cause some physical problems as well as spiritual problems. Overeating, we eat. Overeating, eating salt, too much sugar. Different things like that. It can cause some physical problems. But not staying close to God can cause some spiritual problems. But tell the truth what they did. They told the truth. Mm -hmm. Some folks love the sin and try to turn the church upside down All right. uh, for speaking against sin. All right, now. Never speak what you think. Always speak what God what has said. Yeah. But their message was so powerful back then and so powerful. And their witness was so effective until the critics accused them of turning the world upside down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
God, he commissioned us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. But the modern day church won't even take the gospel to the end of their street. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It has been said that 95% of Christians have never won a soul to Christ. That's right. 80% of all Christians do not even witness on a regular basis. Less than 2% of Christians are involved, not even involved in the ministry of evangelism. All right, man. 71% do not even give towards the finance piece of the Great Commission. These status today are sad because they reveal the truth about the modern church. The modern church today is just satisfied by just being saved within herself. But she has lost her motivation to see others come to Christ be saved as well. The modern church yeah. have lost her responsibility mm -hmm. to come to church on a regular basis. Oh, just, just read the Bible. Freelance whatever you want to. Just live a life slightly clean whatever you want to. Just have uh, be nice or be lovable whenever you want to. That's the sifter messing with the modern day church. All right, Pastor, you preach. What we call ourselves is trying to endure to the end, we say. But we are, amen, put here to be storm, S-T-O-R-M, to storm the very gates of Hades. All right, man. Jesus in Matthew 16 and 18, he says these words, this is the Lord talking. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what Jesus said. So church, we have the key. God has entrusted us with the keys to set captives free. We can't do it but through the Lord Jesus Christ, he has put the keys in our hands and, and given us the power through his name to set the captives free. A spiritual captive is someone who has been taken uh, to spiritual prison and has been confined. I'm not going to go into detail about captivity. All right, all right. Amen. You know, when we can get off track, all of us have been in captivity back then. But only Jesus, only Jesus uh, can release any person that's in confinement, in prison of sin. Only Jesus can set them free. I just wonder, I just wonder right quickly, anybody here, all right. Have anybody been released? Yes, sir. Amen. From your confinement. Yes. yes. Uh, or just being lost. Don't even know the Lord. Yes. Well, I can say that I have. And I know I got some witness here. Yes. But my question is, have you? Yes. So never, never forget. Yes. We have a charge to keep. Yes, sir. And a God to glorify. Yes. Listen to the scripture verses. Uh, amen. It says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven first and in earth. What is, what is he talking about? You have to understand that the Lord had risen from the grave. And, and he got up. He didn't need for anyone to speak for him. He spoke for himself. He told his disciples, he charged them. He said, go ye therefore. Yes. Look at that, go there. Now you gotta have, he's giving them some information. He said, don't just go, but and teach. In other words, how are you gonna teach? You are, you've been with me for three years. Yeah. Amen, you, 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 I, I've taught you some stuff. Yeah. You watched me. And, and he said, I want you to teach all nations. Don't, don't, don't just get caught up in Jerusalem. Yeah. Amen. Because in God, productivity is coming. He said, baptizing them. 
today. We all concentrate on the mass. Yeah. Yeah. It says baptizing them in the name of the Father yeah. and of the Son. Look at that. And it says, and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It says teaching them to observe all things. Yeah. Not what you think, but whatsoever I have commanded you. He said, teach them. The things that I have commanded you. And look what it says, and Lord. He said, I am with you. Yes. Look at the Lord. I know I'm going, but amen. I'm still with you. Good God. Yes. I know you can't see me with your physical eye. Yes. But, but you don't understand now. I'm getting ready yes. to send something that I talked about in the previous verse. Amen. 
David said, you got a mandate. You got a mandate, my God. You didn't call yourself God, so let you do That's why you're here today. That's why you're not in the ground today. Because God entrusted his